Howdy folks, I'm Eleanor from Teomet Surf by the Sea. In honor of our Wild West Circus Show this summer, I'm going to be teaching you some fundamentals of Western style trick roping. Let's get started! All right, let's talk some ropes. The first two ropes that you're gonna see here are rodeo or trick roping style ropes. This is a cotton spot cord. And this is a Mexican charro rope. The other three ropes are common household or recreation style rope. The rope of preference for trick roping is Samson spot cord number 12. Although you can make ropes out of poly like I'll do later in this video. Samson spot cord is great for roping because it's a braided cord that resists getting tangled under a lot of twisting. Alright, the lasso consists of three parts. The loop, the spoke that you hold on to, and the Honda. Alright, let's take a closer look at this Honda. Honda is the small loop at the end of the rope. You'll notice on my Honda I have a little piece of leather, this is called a burner, that helps slow the rope down. I also have two pennies that help add a little bit of weight. So to create the lasso itself, you're going to take your Honda and your spoke, and you're going to thread your spoke through your Honda, just like so, and that is going to create your loop. Okay, part one. To use a rope, you need to have a rope. So let's make one. I'm going to show you two examples of beginner style trick ropes and how to make them. Let's go! Alright, the first rope that we're going to be making is a kitty style rope. I call it kitty because just about anybody can spin it. What we're going to need is a jump rope with a swivel handle. Make sure it's an old jump rope that nobody's going to use anymore. A pair of scissors. They don't have to be incredibly sharp, just enough to cut the jump rope and some tape. Here I'm using athletic tape, but you could use electrical tape as well. Our first step is we're going to measure out our loop and our spoke. For most ropes, your spoke ends up being about a fourth a size of the loop. And the loop could be any size according to your preference for arm length. <laughs> Once I've picked the size of my loop and my spoke, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess rope and put that aside. Okay, now we're going to form our Honda by folding over a small piece of the rope and taping it in place. You want to make sure that your Honda has a big enough hole to allow your spoke to slide freely through. So at this point you could be finished. You have a functional lasso right here in your hands. However, if this rope is for a small child or if you're a super beginner and you're having trouble, I will give you the option to fix your Honda. To do that, just wrap a piece of tape around where your Honda meets your spoke and make sure that the loop is the size that you want it to be because now your loop size won't change. And there you have it. Go ahead and give it a spin. The second rope that we're going to be making is a swivel handle rope. So we're going to need some rope. This is a poly, like I was talking about earlier. You're also going to need a fishing swivel. You can get this at a marine store or a fishing shop. I have my scissors again. Again, not incredibly sharp. I have my roll of tape. It can be electrical again. And then I also have some glue. Here I'm using crazy glue, but you could also use a hot glue gun. So our first step is to measure our handle. This is the area that we're going to be holding on to. So take a grip on your rope, see how long you want it. 
And then I like to tie a knot in the end of my rope just to help myself not let go of the rope. When you're satisfied with the length of your handle, go ahead and give the rope a cut. On the inside of this rope, you can see that it has a core. Some ropes do and some ropes do not, but that is fine for this project. Okay, go ahead and grab your fishing swivel. Boom, there it is. Insert the swivel into the core of the handle. And now we're gonna glue that in place. So put a little piece of glue right in the center there. Be mindful not to get the glue into the center of the swivel because we still want it to spin. And then pinch the rope to hold it into place. We're going to grab our tape and we are going to tape the swivel into place. This is both going to hold the swivel in place and it's going to prevent our rope from fraying. and give that a test and make sure that your swivel is still functional. Okay, grab the rest of your rope. We are going to repeat the same steps at the point where you cut the handle off of your rope. So go ahead and open up the core. You're gonna put a little glue in there and then we are going to insert our swivel just the same. The big advantage for a swivel handle rope for a beginner is that your rope isn't going to get twisted up as you're learning. Okay, go ahead and give that a test. Make sure that your swivel is spinning freely. Okay, now we're gonna measure out and cut our rope. I suggest your entire rope be 12 to 13 feet if you're a beginner or a young person. If you're a taller person, it could be 15 feet. Now we create the Honda by folding over a small piece of the end of the rope that we just cut and we're going to fasten that in place with some tape. We want to make sure that the Honda is big enough to allow our spoke to slide freely through again. Alright, so we can untie the knot in our handle just for now. To thread our spoke through our Honda and create our loop. And now we have created our lasso. we have it, a functional swivel handle rope.
part two. Let's put these ropes to work. The flat loop is the trick roper's first trick. It's the most basic and the easiest of all the rope spinning tricks. And it's an important fundamental trick on which many other rope tricks are based. As the name suggests, the flat loop consists of a spinning loop in a flat horizontal plane. The spoke leads downward from the hand to the loop at about a 45 degree angle. You'll notice right away that my arm stays fairly straight and most of the turning motion is happening in the wrist. First thing we need to do is measure out our loop. Hold the loop out in front of you with the Honda in your left hand and pull the spoke out with your right. Drop the Honda. With that free hand, grab the loop across from where the Honda is and bring that hand to your hip. Just practice a few times bringing the rope over and laying it down flat on the floor. This is the first motion that we're looking for. When that feels okay, use the same motion, but add a spin with your hand. The rope is spinning counterclockwise. Don't be discouraged if this takes many tries to get your rope spinning. Just keep trying. If you're using the rope that we built in this tutorial, then you should have a swivel handle and your rope can spin on forever. If you're not, you'll notice that after a while, the rope starts to get tangled and kinks up. To remedy this, you need to turn the rope in your fingers as you're spinning. This coordination takes a little while to catch on to, so again, don't get discouraged. Before you start spinning, during spinning, or after spinning, you might need to pull out the kinks through your rope. I do this quite often when I practice. So let's take another look at that flat loop. First we're going to measure out our loop and our spoke. Our spoke is typically a fourth the size of our loop. We're going to drop the Honda, grab at our hip, throw the rope onto the floor and start spinning. Starting is typically the hardest part of the flat loop to master. So again, don't get discouraged if it takes you a little while. The flat loop is the gateway to a world of other tricks. So keep practicing and you'll have it in no time. 